Hello and welcome to Hey Hey, This Is Our World. Today we'll be talking about Honolulu, Cindy Lauper, Lathy Pool, and nuclear bombs. Our two guests today are Mr. and Mrs. J.L. Walters. Mr. and Mrs. Walters just came from a holiday in Honolulu, which is our first topic tonight. Mr. Walters, you had a good time, I'm sure. What out of everything that happened there would you say was the worst and best? The worst and best? Oh, well, there's so many nice things. I can't say one was better than the other. There's lots of wonderful things. It's such a beautiful climate. Uh, the sun's shining all the time. You've got beautiful beaches to wander around on. and Well, I don't need to say anything more about that. You just have to be there to enjoy it all. Surfing and swimming and sailing. So and there the is worst that part, I don't know. Uh, we okay. didn't have anything very serious. Maybe getting soaking wet in the rain. <laughs> Mrs. Walters, you had a good time, I'm sure, also. What out of everything that happened there would you say was the worst and best? Well, there's no worst about uh, Hawaii, and particularly Honolulu and uh, Waikiki. Um, Oahu is a beautiful island, and, um, of course, uh, Diamond Head is the true symbol of uh, Hawaii, and it's one of the most uh, red, uh, readily identifiable landmarks on Earth. Mr. Walters, I'm sure that you did shopping there to bring back gifts, souvenirs, etc. And were the prices reasonable there, or were they more expensive than here? Well, the, the normal groceries and things of that nature, you find it's all a little bit higher over there than here because it's got to be all shipped from the mainland over there. And that's much more expensive than trucking it, say, 200 miles with a truck. But as far as the um, normal things that are going on there that we don't have here, uh, you haven't anything to compare with it, but it's extremely nice. For example, um, you go down the street and you find somebody is selling you pineapples. Now, where can you buy pineapples in Saskatoon walking down the street? You can't. So it's just a novel thing, and you, all kinds of people have bought cases of pineapples home. Um, their fruit, some of the different tropical things are so different and so nice. Um, that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about. Okay, and were the crowds quite well there? Did, were they selling well, or was it quite bare on the streets? Bare? Oh. <laughs> and then we saw more people from Saskatoon when we were there than we are when we walked down the street in Saskatoon. The, the crowds were so huge that the um, hotels were sold out. If you came over there, just got, a, were able to get over there in a flight, with just the flight, and you could try to get there to get a room, you couldn't get one. And uh, for example, one night, uh, there was a storm in Japan, and there was two great big 747 jets of Japanese flying back to Japan. And the f flights were canceled. So they had to stay in uh, Waikiki. And you know what happened? There was nowhere for them to sleep. So the hotels took bed sheets and hung them up in rows in the ballroom of a big dance floor. And that's where those people had to sleep, on mattresses on the floor. Imagine, two, uh, two airplanes load like that. Then, at the same time, <laughs> the hotels wanted a room so bad that they offered to pay anybody that would move out ahead of time $250 a day for the room. And they might have paid $40 for the room, $50, whatever, 75 or 100 a day, and here they were going to give them 250 just so they'd move out. And that was just to help all the people that uh, were just coming there, and they wanted to accommodate them. 
How long were you there? Just about a month. And where did you stay? Oh, we stayed at the Reef Towers. That's just on the lower end of Lurie Street, just a couple of doors away from the one of the oldest hotels down there, which they have just rebuilt, and uh, just a beautiful place. And to give you an idea, I was just mentioning about prices. The uh, executive suite there rents for $1,000 a night. And uh, there's 75% 70, booked up. So even the, that expensive room, they're almost running short of them. Um, you came back this morning, and you left last night. So about how many hours did it take you to fly here? Oh, I didn't try to keep track. The, uh, let's see, 4 to 12 is... Eight. Well, it might be about twelve hour flight, eleven hours. Um, would you describe to us your view of Honolulu? Honolulu or Waikiki? Uh, They're two different places. Well, it uh, everybody always says Honolulu, and and Waikiki and Hawaii. And they normally don't know it. Um, Hawaii has several islands, and they're all different names. And the island that we were on is called Wahoo. And that has the main harbor of Honolulu, where the air raid in the war was, where the sh battleships were sunk and everything. And that's at Honolulu. And Waikiki is a famous bathing beach, just a beautiful, long strip of sand. And that's the part we spent, mo we spent most of our time between both those places. I see you have a suntan, Mr. Walters. Did you swim at all? Oh, always. Why would you ever go to Hawaii if you wouldn't get near the water? And, and of course, the, the main fun of all is going and sunbathing on the beaches. And the beaches are so crowded at times that you can hardly walk through the crowd. And everybody be spread out there, suntan lotion and lying there, reading books, just lying there, relaxing. Every once in a while, run, jump in the water. And of course, there's all kinds with body surfing and uh, the surfboards. Oh, that's just something else. That's one of the, well, that's the most famous place in the world for surfing with a board. And just so thrilling to see how those, especially the young fellows, they're so good at it. Mrs. Walters, would you tell us a bit of facts? or history about Honolulu? Well, Honolulu is uh, in on the island of Oahu, and basically Hawaii is a magic place, and it's full of unexpected pleasures. Honolulu, of course, is the welcoming gateway to this island paradise, and uh, it's a large cosmopolitan city, and uh, it still remains Hawaiian despite the uh, coming of the 20th centuries. The uh, reminder of the old life, though, are everywhere, and among them are Iolani Palace, and it's America's, the United States' only royal palace. And uh, this is where Hawaii's last queen wrote the haunting song, Aloha'i. And, um, but after you've enjoyed the uh, loveliness of l lively Waikiki, and you've uh, visited the many things that uh, are so interesting there, and you've uh, shopped in the marvelous bazaars of the Alamoana Center, there is still uh, the international marketplace uh, and the many other shops 
that uh, are truly Hawaiian and are just a pleasure to browse through and see all the lovely Hawaiian woods and souvenirs that uh, uh, are there. Um, the loa mumus and shirts that are everywhere and one of the first things that uh, visitors uh, uh, buy. What would you say made your trip complete? Well, there is so much to see and uh, do in uh, Honolulu. Uh, there are the various volcanoes. Uh, Diamond Head is in Honolulu. And of course, there are the famous fruits and uh, favorite flowers. And uh, many happy Hawaiians making music. There are the luau's to attend and the uh, many hula maidens everywhere. And of course, one of the wonderful things to uh, see in Honolulu is uh, the uh, surfing and uh, fishing and uh, the wonderful hospitality in uh, Honolulu. Okay, and our second topic is Sydney Lauper, a punk rocker who has just released her first album. Mrs. Walters, had you heard of her before you met her? Uh, I hadn't heard of Cindy Lauper. I happened to see a Johnny Carson show uh, a few nights before I actually met Cindy in the Sheraton Waikiki where we were having our brunch. And um, in the interview with Johnny Carson and also seeing her wonderful singing talent, uh, her name and uh, her personality um, was um, very um, impressionable on me. And uh, so that when I happened to look up uh, at this young girl sitting next to us at the uh, table, I instantly recognized her. And uh, it wasn't until we were going out that um, we happened to be walking beside each other. And I mentioned to Miss Lauper that uh, I had seen her on the program. And we wound up getting our picture taken together and I her album, She's So Unusual, is number nine on the Saskatoon album charts, and her hit single, Girls Just Want to Have Fun, is number four this week. Mr. Walters, would you describe Cindy to us and tell what you thought of her? Oh, wow, that's a dandy. Well, to start off with, it's something like some of the other rocks. They're kind of freakish. And she has bright orange hair. Oh, and it just sticks out like Phyllis Diller. That's exactly it. That's one thing. Then she had, it was like oversized blue jeans, no, pantaloons, I guess you call them. And she had a f felt hat on, like a men's felt hat. And I just said to myself, I wonder who that girl is. And I was looking at her all the time we were eating. And I had seen her on the TV show, and I didn't realize it was the same girl. But I don't, I don't really know her numbers very well, because I haven't heard enough of it. But uh, she must be pretty good when you get to those standings. Mr. Walters, you told me earlier you didn't know that Lathy Pool had been closed down by City Hall. How do you feel about living next door to a closed down pool? Living next door to a closed down pool is kind of odd to think of it that way. It's like uh, living next door to an empty building. And uh, I guess I got used to that. Um, I hope that they'll fix whatever's the problem. Well, um, it's probably money, but maybe there's something matter with the foundation. I don't know. Um, Mrs. Walters, did you used to see a lot of people going there every day? Yes, we'll miss the uh, constant flow of uh, children and adults that... Um, 
took advantage of the pool in the hot weather. Did either of you ever swim there? When the pool was uh, first opened, uh, we used to go down and uh, it was much handier, of course, than going over to the Avenue H pool where everyone went uh, 30 or 40 years ago. Our last subject today is nuclear bombs. Mr. Walters, how do you feel about nuclear bombs? Horrified. Horrified. Because, because um, anything to do with war is horrifying for anybody. And uh, nuclear bombs is something that you're here today and gone tomorrow, and there isn't any way around it. Once it's, once the bomb is let off, you're going to would have had it. Now, in conjunction with the uh, that, when we were away, we went and saw the Arizona destroyer that was sunk at Pearl Harbor. And does that ever impress you when you just see one ship sunk and went down in six minutes or eight minutes with uh, over a thousand aboard? Well, that's a small thing compared to nuclear bombs, because as you know at Hiroshima, well now today they've got them much bigger and stronger, and our well our whole world is is just shot if they ever let a couple of big ones go. Mrs. Walters, did you watch the day after? Yes, I did. It was very uh, impressionable picture and uh, certainly would make everyone do a lot of thinking about the effects of nuclear warfare. Mr. Walters, if World War III comes soon, do you think they will be using mainly nuclear bombs and nuclear missiles, etc.? Well, they're trying to stay away from it, but the there's just a chance that something may happen at some time. That's why everybody is so much against nuclear warfare, because they are so powerful that virtually we could wipe ourselves off the earth with the wrong steps being taken to use them. Okay, and now it's time for Ray the Record. Our record this week is Karma Chameleon by the Terry Hawkins Band. You rate the song from 1 to 10, and 10 is the best. <laughs> Mrs. Walters, how would you write the new hit song? For that wonderful edition, so um, original and so well played, I would rate it a nine and a half. And you, Mr. Walters? Well, I thought there was a couple of rusty elbows in there, so I wouldn't be so generous. I think I would rate it about a, a six. Six. Thank you. Well, I'd like to thank Mr. and Mrs. J.L. Walters for being on the show tonight. See you next week on Hey Hey, This Is Our World.